this is Gina. Today I'm going to be open, opening the curated bead box, November subscription box, and also the Christmas box, which is a separate order box. But I wanted to just tell you before I start that I made a complete um, video of opening the box. I also wanted to show you what I have made out of the boxes and there is a tutorial at the end of the video so that you can learn how to make these too. So I wanted to show you really quick. These are Christmas tree ornaments that I made with the Christmas box. And then I also made smaller hoop type things for earrings with the Christmas box. I also just used one of the components in the Christmas box and made a very simple little earring. And then with the November box, I did the same type of thing. Um, I do not show you in detail how to make these because it's the same type of thing. But I've also made a regular type hoop earring with the November box. So I just wanted you to know that this is on there. Here's one that I made for a Christmas tree ornament also. Of course, these can be really huge earrings too if you want them to be, but these are meant to be ornaments. So anyway, that is at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Hi everyone, this is Gina. Today I have two curated bead boxes to share with you. I have the November subscription box, and then I have a separate curated bead box Christmas box, which is not part of the subscription, but you can get it from the website. So, um, the boxes are $20 a month on the subscription, and you can go to curatedbeadbox.com, put in the code GINA35%, and write out the percent in words, and um, you can get 35% off your first box if you are a new subscriber. So, I want to go through both of these boxes. I think I'll start with the... Eh, I'll start with the... Um, the subscription box for November and everything is listed on the front right here so you can go through and see what everything is all the product numbers are here and all of these products you can also get more of on the dollarbead.com because this is part of dollarbead.com and you can go to that website and get those particular items if you want more of them so let me go ahead and lay out what's in this box in order so that you don't have to watch me try to figure it out. And then we'll see what each item is. Okay, so I have laid everything out in the order. This one doesn't want to behave. In the order that it is on the box, on the front of the box. And we'll go through them. It looks like this time there's a few really nice little components and a really nice amount of findings. So we'll look at those too. But first we have a 12 millimeter lavender glass bead pearl, 8 inch string. These are really nice. These, I was looking at them, the paint is nice, it's, it doesn't look like it'll scratch easy, it's nice and thick, they feel good. Nice um, quality glass pearl. And that's what that is. And then we have a 12 millimeter light amethyst style glass bead. 8 inch string. So this is kind of a crackle bead. Let me get close so you can see. This is pretty. This looks like it's amethyst. It's really nice. That would make a pretty stretch bracelet or yeah, put these two together. It's really pretty. So that's nice. And then make a nice Christmas gift for somebody. Make a couple bracelets or something. And then we have a 10 millimeter red glass pearl bead 8 inch string. So that's a little bit smaller, still very nice luster, very pretty color, feels good, nice strand of glass pearls. Then we have 8 millimeter red glass pearl bead 16 inch string, not shiny. So these look more like a druk or something, they're really pretty. So that's a nice long string too. That would be good for Christmas ornaments and um, Christmas jewelry, whatever. That's that's a nice color. And then we have a 6mm wine rustic glass pearl bead. I love these rustic glass pearls. And this is a nice long strand. But you can see it's 
they're textured. I hope you can see that. Let me see. <laughs> I'm out of camera. There we go. It's got a nice texturing on them. They're really pretty. I really like these. Let me see if I can get even closer so you can see the texturing on them. Those are pretty. I like these in all colors. I used to use the turquoise colored ones quite a bit. And every time I get these, I will use these. I love them. And then we have 6 millimeter purple silver leaf style glass bead. So this one has really pretty, um, like, painted decor on it. It's, it's not floral or anything like that. Let me rearrange my camera. I can't seem to get in here very well. Let's see. But it's really pretty. It's got silver, like, glitter paint on it, and that's really pretty. I really like that. Let me see if I can do this a little better. And then we have um, six millimeter lavender jade style glass beads. These are all really pretty. All this lavenders, I really like lavender. I like the jade style. It's a long strand too. And look at these two together. That's nice. That's really pretty. And this one. And this one. Uh, you can make a really cool long like opera length um, necklace out of this. This would be really pretty just doing different um, asymmetrical long necklace. That would be really pretty. And then we have six millimeter black onyx, onyx gemstone bead. Mom, oh, this is actually a gemstone bead. And it's black onyx. That's nice. Those are usually kind of expensive. Let me just show you a close up. Those are pretty. And that would be pretty with the purple jade looking. I like purple and black together. That's nice. And then we have a four millimeter black glass pearl bead 16 inch string. So this is really nice little four millimeter black glass pearls. Those are pretty. And that, again, would look good with your purples. Then we have, uh, let's see if I can find it, um, four millimeter round iron bead, approximately 200 beads. These I use a lot. I like these. I have, I bought a big package of them at a bead show once and I use these quite often in my, um, designs because I really like just having a plain silver ball. That's that's really pretty. And these are a little bright, a bit brighter silver than the ones that I usually use. They're, the other ones I use are more of a nickel look. These ones are more bright silver sterling look. And I will use those most definitely. I love those. And then, and there's 200 of them, so it's not like you got four. And you got quite a bit. And then we have 16 by 8 millimeter, wait, wait a minute, 1 millimeter silver link chain, 40 inch length. That's pretty long chain, let's see. And it, good, it's a good decent size. It's a little lighter weight, but it's a nice decent size of link. I hate when I get the little tiny microscopic links and I can't even put a jump ring through them. That's no fun. This is nice. This is a good weight. It's lighter, but it would be really nice to do um, extensions on your bracelets or almost anything that you need chain for. That's nice. That's pretty. I like that. And then we have a 16 by 8 millimeter silver metal link. Let's see. Wait, wait a minute. Um, 16 by 8 silver flower metal links. Four links. And these are fun to play with. I like having little flower connectors. I'll show you what they look like. Those are always fun to have. Come here. I have got to get my fingernails done today. They are too long and grown out. I've got to go do that. Let's see. So, it's really pretty. Those are fun to play with. And that, again, if you were going to make it the long necklace, like I said, those would make really great connectors. Those would be fun to play with. Okay. Then we have 
36 millimeter black round filigree pendant. This guy out of here. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Pretty. You could make a, you could put a jump ring on that or you could connect it on the ends. However, I mean, you could do a lot of stuff with that. I'm wondering if you could even do like a brick stitch through it and make it your centerpiece. That would be kind of cool too. I'd have to play with that to see if I could actually accomplish that, but I think you could. Okay. Now, we have, in every box there comes a bag of um, findings. And so you usually get crimp beads and ear wires and just um, a lot of stuff to make your pieces with. This one looks like it has some memory wire in it too. So, yeah, I think you could make some really nice memory wire bracelets. This, maybe I'll do a quick tutorial on using memory wire for my beginner's channel here. And then, and that's a nice, you can make a couple bracelets out of that. That's a pretty nice amount. And then we have some bead stringing wire in here and some, let's see if I can grab that. Let's see. So yeah, there's some nice bead stringing wire in there. A little bit fine, but not so fine that it would break. That's nice. The finer ones work really well when you're using small beads too. So that that's really nice. I like that. It's medium to fine. Maybe it's more. I don't know. It's pretty pretty good size. A good size to work with. It will work really well with the crimp beads I like. And then some lobster claw clasps. Let's see if I can get the glare off of that. And there are four of those. And then a few sets of French ear wires. I hope that the glare from my lights are not blotting this out. But those are just your ear wires there. There's a lot in the findings kit today. I like that. That, that really helps when you have a lot of findings. And then here's some head pins. They got, they're a little curved. That's interesting. Let's look at that. I don't know if they're just curved from being bent or if they're supposed to be like that. I don't know. But you can always straighten them out. Yeah, they're soft enough. You can straighten them right out. Those are um, nice. It's hard to work with really hard ones that don't bend. But you want them to be hard enough to where they're not going to just squish either. That's pretty good. So there's quite a few of those in there to work with, which makes it nice. I like to have head pins on hand when I'm going to make earrings and things. And then there's some nice jump rings in here. Some crimp beads. And some elastic so that you can make stretch bracelets or whatever you would like with that. So that's that's a nice findings kit. I like that. That's that's um, a nice one this time. Really good. I like it. So that's quite a bit of stuff for 20 bucks. A lot of beads. Let me show you again. I got them all messed up now, but you know, you gotta mess them up when you're looking at them. So that is the November, or yes, the November subscription, and it's called Sophistication, and it's got a lot of really pretty colors and cool components and stuff in it. I like that. So, this is a really nice box, and I'll probably make something and show you what I've made. So, or I may make something, maybe I'll make something on my beginner's channel because it really does help to see how the piece is made, too. So that is the November box, and now I want to move to the Christmas box, and we'll just look at it. There's no reason for me to go off camera and play with it and do all kinds of weird stuff. Let me see if I can actually open it. I think it else come in handy for something. And they're always packaged really nice. It comes wrapped in tissue paper. And this is heavy. There must be some good sized beads in here. Let's see. Oh, lots of stuff in here. Wow. Yeah, this is nice. 
And so she also wrote to me and said, you know, this isn't just for making jewelry. This Christmas one, it would be for making Christmas ornaments, Christmas decorations, things like that. And there's a lot of really cool stuff in here. So let's look at this and see what we have. So 12 millimeter dark red crackle glass beads. So that's these. And these are really pretty. Let me get you close so you can see they have a nice crackle in them. Really pretty color. That's really nice. That would make some really neat stuff for Christmas decorations or even a really pretty Christmas um, bracelet. Or you could add a couple of the different beads that are in here with it. Make a necklace, make ornaments, all kinds of stuff for this. That's really pretty. And um, she said something about making napkin holders, things like that. So maybe we'll have to play with this and see what we can come up with. So this is the first one. It's a 12 millimeter dark red glass bead, six inch string. And then it's, of course, on the box, it's got the number. So you can go to dollarbead.com and get more if you want more. And then we've got 12 millimeter red glass pearl bead. So... Red glass pearl bead. I'm wondering if that's this. Looks more like a glass crackle bead to me. Maybe this. This is the red glass pearl bead. That's what it looks like. And it's kind of a maroon color. That's really pretty. And then we've got 10 millimeters silver green glass pearl. Silver green glass pearl. That's 10 millimeter. So that would have to be I don't know, let me figure this okay, out. Okay, so I decided to go ahead and straighten them out anyway. And it looks like it varies a little bit from the list on the box just because I think um, bead sizes and types may vary due to availability. So it, my box may be just a little bit different than the list. Either that or I'm just not identifying them correctly. But let's start again. So we have a 12 millimeter dark red crackle glass bead strand. And that's this one. And we've looked at that one. And then we have a 12 millimeter red glass pearl bead six inch string I believe it's this one and that's the maroon color one and then we have it says a 10 millimeter silver green glass pearl bead and I don't think I have that um, unless it's this one but it says six inch string and it says 10 millimeter and this could possibly be but I don't think it is because that's a lot longer than a six inch string. So that's where I got mixed up last time. So 10 millimeter Christmas chili, chill, Christmas chill, not chili, abstract glass bead. And that's this one. So this one has the really pretty little abstract colors, the green and the silver on it. That's really pretty. I don't know how well it comes across in the camera, but that's a really pretty glass bead. And then we have 8 millimeter grass green glass pearl bead. So I'm thinking that's this one. And because it is a 10.5 inch strand, and I'm pretty sure that's what this one is. And then we have... Um, six millimeter deep red silver leaf style glass bead and that's this one and this has a lot of really pretty little silver leafing on it and the dark red splotches splotches i didn't know if that's a really great way to describe it but that's really pretty nice beads and then we have a green one the same thing six millimeter green silver leaf style 16 inch strand and that's really pretty too. It has the silver through it, the pretty green um, kind of marbled look. That's really pretty. And then we have um, 28 by 22. Oh, wait a minute. We have a six millimeter grass green crackle bead right here. This is pretty. 
That's a nice color for Christmas too. Let me back off just a little bit. And then these two, I'm not sure that it was listed. Wait, this is a red crackle glass, really pretty. It's like eight millimeter. That's really nice. And then we have um, a silver, nice long silver strand of beads here. It's really pretty, like six millimeter. And then I have the 28 by 22 millimeter red wood stocking for ornaments. Great for gift wrap. So this would be pretty to put on your ribbon for on a package. These are really cool. Little wood ornaments. These are really cute. And that's what those are. It's pretty. And then we have 30 by 32 millimeter green wood tree for ornaments. Also great for gift wrap. This would be really cute on either on a little tiny Christmas tree or for gift wrap, or you could put them on a napkin ring. Or you could make a little dangle for a, um, a wine glass holder. You could do all kinds of things with these little ornaments. They're really cute. You could make them as earrings too. Just put them on an ear wire. They're ready. They're done. Just like that. That would be cute. A lot of people like really whimsical things. These would work the same way as would the snowflakes here. Snowflakes would also even work as a pendant. And we've got four snowflakes, wooden snowflakes. Nice. Those would be really, really pretty on a gift. And like I said, you could just put Christmas hooks on these and put them on a little tiny Christmas tree. That would be really cute. That's probably what I'll do. I always bring a little tiny Christmas tree or decorate a little tiny Christmas tree for my son who's in college. So those would work really good for that. And then we have um, 8 by 10 random color metal bell. 10 bells, 2 bags. So we have all these cute little jingle bells in all different colors. And those two would make really cute dingle earrings or they would make really cute um, additions to your ribbon, tie on your ribbon at the end of your um, gift wrap ribbon. That would be pretty. You can make a bracelet out of those too. Just dangle them off the chain, put jump rings on them and dangle them and make a little charm bracelet. That would be really cute too. Then we have eight millimeters silver round iron bead, approximately 45 beads. This is a nice big metal bead. This is pretty. I like the small ones, I use them all the time. It's nice to have a big one like this too. This is really pretty. And you can use all of this stuff to make ornaments with, to make all kinds of Christmas stuff. Doesn't necessarily have to be jewelry. It could be almost anything. That's really pretty. Then we've got a really nice bag of findings again. Let's see, did I put the other bag away? I think it doesn't accept it. Nope. There's another really nice bag of findings. Pretty much the same as the last one I went through. The memory wire, the ear wires, beading wire to string your beads onto, jump rings, head pins, crimp beads, elastic, and lobster claw clasps. Really nice. This is a very nice big collection of nice Christmas colory stuff and I will be playing with this and see if I can come up with something. So just Stay tuned. Maybe I'll go ahead and put this all on my beginner's channel so that I can play with these and and um, maybe make a few tutorials or just something to kind of inspire. Anyway, this is the Christmas box. It's separate from the subscription. You can go to curatedbeadbox.com and um, if you don't see it right away or whatever, I'm sure there's a way to contact them and ask them exactly how to acquire your box. So just go to curatedbeadbox.com. And then, of course, here is the other box. That's full of the pretty stuff we just looked at. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this unboxing. And I should be back shortly with 
a few things to make. I may make a separate video. I don't know. We'll see how that comes out for the moment. Bye-bye. Okay, so what I have done with the Christmas box, and um, I may make something from the other box too, but with the Christmas box, I've decided to make these Christmas tree ornaments. Now, you can just put a Christmas tree wire on it. You don't have to put make the wire like I'm going to. I just used a head pin. Or this can also be a really big earring. You can also make them smaller as an earring, and I'll show you how to do that. But what I've used is I've just gotten out some of the Christmas-themed beads, just the silver ones, and just all of them. I just take have taken a bunch of them out so that I can make each ornament a little bit different. I'm using the wooden, um, the wooden charms, and you can use whatever you want. In this one, I used the snowflake and I just glued I got my E6000 out or you can use a hot glue gun and I just glued a pretty bead onto the middle just to make it a little bit shinier and this was something out of my personal collection I just grabbed a flat bead and glued it on there you can also use a flat back so like if you wanted to glue it on the tree or something like that you could do that just a flat back crystal and glue it on I'm using some of the head pins some of the jump rings that came in the box, and I'm using the memory wire. I've also wrapped a few so that I could make them um, dangle if I would like. So I will show you how to do that too. But first, just to make this basic ornament, we are going to grab a hold of some of the wire here. So I've got the um, memory wire, and I am just going to, I have one that I already cut some off but I'm just going to cut it to where it's a complete loop so I'm going to have a little extra left over off of, off of this one but I'm just laying it like this and let me get you a little closer so you can see where it meets and I'm going to use some memory wire cutters now if you use your regular um, flesh cutters you can ruin them so you will want to have some memory wire cutters or use something in your garage that's really heavy duty to cut them with do not use your jewelry cutters because you will ruin them then cut it in a complete circle like so let me back off a little bit now and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my round nose pliers and I am just going to turn a loop under on one end of this wire so I just can't quite get in camera here I want you to be able to see what I'm doing I'm going to grab a hold of one end of the wire at the very end and I'm not going to make my loop really big I'm just going to go down a little ways on my pliers and I'm going to begin to bend this straight under so I'm holding it like this and I'm just going to bend it under into a loop and I'm going to continue to turn until I get a full loop like so so you can see it's bent under and then I'm going to begin by putting some beads onto my wire so on this one I put a lot of beads on here you can put just a few on the bottom you can put them all the way around however you want but I started by putting some of the bigger hold beads on here. Now some of your beads are not going to go around the curve very well so you're going to have to just test and see what beads are going to work. These beads in this Christmas box work pretty good so you don't have to worry about too much but if you're using your own beads and they don't want to drop around the curve then you're going to have to find different beads that will. So I'm going to put on a few of my silver ones and then I'm going to drop on my red one. I'm going to do this basically like the other one I did. And then I'm going to drop one of these bigger beads on. Now, if you want to make it look a little bit different, you can drop a wire wrapped bead too. And I'll show you how to do that. But let's see. Do I want to do that yet? Maybe not yet. I think I'll put on a green bead. Yep. and another silver bead 
and then a green bead. And then I think I'm going to drop down one of my, let's see how many that's going to be. Maybe I'll put another big bead. And then I'm going to drop one of these wire wrapped down. And like I said, I'll show you how to wire wrap it if you don't know how with the head pins. So I'm going to drop that one down. And then I'm going to put on another of the big beads here. And then I'm just going to repeat the pattern on this side. Green bead, silver bead, green bead. My hands are a little shaky this morning. I apologize. Right after I drink my coffee, that's pretty much the way it works. Okay. So I'm just going to continue putting these on until I have exactly what I want here. Oh my, this is just really not this hard, I guarantee you. Just drop these down. And I think I'll do another tutorial with crystals and stuff and make some actual hoop earrings for you. Um, this is just going to be part of this bead box opening tutorial. So now I have it all the same. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my pliers again and I am going to go over to this wire. Now I'm going to get you close. So this loop was down. Now I want this loop to be out. So what I'm going to do is place them like this and begin to turn. And then I'll reposition my hand. Turn a loop out. And I'll just keep turning it until I have a complete loop. But I'm going to leave it slightly open so I can hook it around the other wire. So, this is what I have. Oops, I hope I was in camera. This is what I have. I just turned it towards me instead of under. And then I'm going to hook these two together. Then I will close this loop a little bit more by turning it. And then I'll close this loop by turning it. Just make sure they're somewhat closed like so. And then you can see that this loops a little bit bigger and I made it a little bit bigger so that I can dangle something off of it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my Christmas tree and I am going to open one of the jump rings that came in the box. Now if you're using your own make sure they're about oh I think they're about eight millimeter or six millimeter. Let me see if I can find my measure. I cannot. I'll put that in caption how big they are. Just as long as they're big enough to go through your Christmas tree and hook onto your um, your loop. So I've got a jump ring. I'm going to open it from side to side so I'm grabbing a hold with my chain nose and my flat nose pliers and I'm just opening that jump ring. Twisting it open. And then I'm going to grab the Christmas tree charm and I'm going to go through it with my jump ring, like so. And then I'm going to put it onto the loop that's facing down on my um, ornament. And I'm going to close this jump ring. Now this gets a little tricky. So let me see if I can do this with my shaky hands here. And just close this. Do it gently. If you go too rough, you'll slip like I just did. Close it and wiggle it a little so that it closes tight. Like okay, so. now to make the hook to hang it on the tree, you can either just slide a Christmas tree hook onto the loop that goes down, or you can take one of the head pins that came in the box, and with your flesh cutters, just cut the end of the head pin off 
so that you just have a piece of wire. Now you can use a regular piece of wire too. You don't have to use the head pins. That's fine. Whatever you want to do. And then take your round nose pliers and grab a hold of the end. Now I want this loop to be kind of big, so I am going to go about well, in the middle of my way, a little bit further down towards the end of my pliers. So it's a little bit bigger and I'm just going to start turning a loop. I'm not going to close it all the way, but real close, like so. And then you can then use whatever you would like to wrap it around that's round. You can use one of your bead tubes and wrap the top of it around. Or you can use a bailing plier and let's see if I have that so I can just go up a little ways I'm going to take this one and just kind of bend it straight just a little bit I'm going to go up a little ways on the wire like so and then I'm just going to wrap this around the big part of my bailing pliers and then I'm going to take the end and just bend it out just a little bit and as you see, this is also it can be an ear wire too. If you use wire that isn't already kind of bent up, it'll be a lot prettier. But you can always hammer it a little bit or you can just straighten it out, make it look a little bit better, like so. And then just open the bottom <coughs> loop that you've created from side to side and put it onto your ornament. This can also be a really big hoop. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> and then just close that wire like so. And now you either have a really huge ear earring or you have a Christmas tree ornament. Now, if it's going to be an earring, then you want to use nothing bigger than 20 gauge wire and you want to um, smooth the end. So you would just take a file, you can use a metal file or an emery board, and just smooth it until the edges are not sharp anymore and you can have that as a ear wire also. But, <clears throat> This is a little big for me. I would prefer this to be a Christmas tree ornament. So that's what you can do. You can also use the stockings and the, um, like so. And if you wanted to put a sparkly little bead in the center, like if I want to put this right in that loop, then all I have to do is add a little E6000, or you can use your hot glue gun if you have one. And I just put a little bit of glue on this bead and drop it down in the center and then that makes it a little sparklier so you can do that too you have to let it set aside for a while and dry <clears throat> and then you have a really pretty Christmas tree ornament and if you just want to make a really simple earring then use one of your jump rings from the box open it up from side to side put it on the Christmas tree Oh, okay, or the stocking or whichever one you want to use. And then close the jump ring. Wiggling it back and forth, like so. And then open one of the ear wires that came in your kit. And drop it on. Like so. And then you have a really simple earring. Like so. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to show you how to wrap a little dangle like this so that you can do that too if you want to use it for your Christmas tree ornaments. And I think I'll, I'll actually make a pair of earrings with it too. So just grab one of your head pins, drop it down, or drop your bead down on it. And then grab your round nose pliers. Uh, this is really thick gauge wire, so you're going to want to have another pair of pliers available. You're not going to be able to wrap it really easily with your fingers and make it really neat. So 
hold on to the end of the right up at the end of the bead hold on to the wire nice and tight and just go oh uh, I don't know just a little ways down your pliers you can always make a mark if you want to make sure all your loops are the same go a little ways down and then bend over the plier itself just bend the wire over it then move your plier into that area that you bent bring the wire over the top of the plier and then turn your plier just a little bit so that you complete your loop now if your loop this wire kind of straightens out it's really soft if your loop isn't quite straight just go down at the bottom of the loop and bend it over a little bit like that now I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers and I am going to hold on to the loop I'm going to bring this wire up I still need to bend that a little bit more there we go I'm going to bring this wire up parallel to my pliers like so and then I'm going to grab my round nose or you can use another pa pair of chain nose it doesn't matter but with this particular wire it helps to wrap so that as you wrap you can pull with your pliers so just grab a hold of it and wrap and pull and that way it'll be nice and neat otherwise this thick wire just doesn't want to wrap really nice and neat like so and then when you get to where you are at the bead, the bead's nice and tight on the piece of wire, then you're going to grab your flush cutters and just cut that off. And then you have a little piece left, you're going to take your chain nose pliers and just tuck it in so that it isn't sharp and it doesn't stick out and catch clothes and skin and all that good stuff. And now you have a little dangle wrap. And so, if you want to make a pair of earrings that aren't quite so big, you can still use your memory wire. Let's grab a little piece of this one I've already cut a couple times, so let's see. I'm going to grab some memory wire here and show you how to make a little bit smaller hoop to make an earring. So, I've got just a couple of loops here of my memory wire. I'm just going to make it about half the loop. Right about here. Now once you cut one, since you're making a pair of earrings, put the other one next to the wire and cut it the same size. So I'm going to cut about here. So this is what I have. And then I'm going to take this one. Oh, this end is kind of messed up. Let me cut that off. I'm going to place this one on top of what remains of my wire here and cut another one the same size like so. Now I am going to take one end just like I did on the big loop for the Christmas ornament. I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and I'm going to bend a loop in. Too close. So I'm just going to grab a hold of it and bend this loop in. All the way in. Just keep pushing it. It's kind of, it takes a little strength with memory wire. It's hard wire. Like so. Now I am just going to grab, maybe I just want, um, I'll take a silver bead, drop it down, and then I'm going to take one of my dangles and put it on there. Or do I want to put, do that? No, I don't think I do actually. I think I just want to put some, I'll put a green one. And another silver one. And I'm just going to make these kind of minimal. Get on there, you. Like so. Then I'm going to take my wire again. And I am going to make sure that I now bend this one towards me. 
So I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to make this one kind of small and just bend it all the way around the loop like so towards me. Now I am going to slide this over. This is going to make more of a teardrop shape because we've shortened the wire so it kind of changes the shape of the wire here. Let's see if I can get it around and hook them together. I'm going to have to close that a little more. And hook them together. Ah, oh, yeah, sure, Gina. Okay, so I'm going to open this one and slide it over the top of that one. Like so. And then I'll close it. I said what memory wire can be take a little strength but as you can see I've got this loop on the top now that one's hooked over and you can close them tighter if you'd like they're pretty much going to stay where they're at I don't think they're going to move around a lot but you don't want them to be sharp and grab a hold of clothing or anything so I'm just working it until I can get it pretty well closed and now I've got this little earring wire like this. Then I'm going to take my dangle I made and I'm going to put it on a jump ring. And then I'm going to slide this jump ring on the loop that's facing down. And grab a hold of my jump ring. And get another pair of pliers and close my jump ring. Jeez, Gina. There we go. Like so. And then I will just grab one of the ear wires that came in my kit. Now, like I said, you have to kind of watch the size of your beads, too. When you're making the smaller loop, you want to make sure that the beads will slide down nice in the middle and stay centered. If your bead is too big, the hole is too small, it doesn't want to go around the curve like so, um, you'll have a difficult time with it. But <clears throat> all these beads seem to work pretty well for this, so. Then open the ear wire. And go ahead and slide it onto that loop. Or you can put a jump ring and slide it on too if you'd like. But I'm just going to attach my ear wire directly to it. And that looks like that loop is open again. So I'm going to close that loop a little bit better. Okay. I hope I was actually in camera. I will find out on the playback, won't I? Okay, so now I have, oops, an earring. A little Christmas themed type earring. A little bit smaller than the um, big old huge hoop thing. But you can also just cut it about any size and make them big, small, whatever you would like. If you get your wire too short, then it's not going to work very well in hooking together. Plus, you can kind of modify your hooks as you do it too to make sure that it works okay. Make them bigger so that you can hook them together a little bit better. I made mine a little small so I had a bit of a struggle but you'll just have to play with it. Get the feel of the wire and figure out what's going to work for you. But that's another idea. So we've got <clears throat> that, that, this, And let me back off so you can see. And those are several little ideas that you can do for with your Christmas box. You can also use your other box and do exactly the same thing and just make um, 
an earring that is not Christmas themed. Maybe I'll make one and show okay, you. Okay, so here is one made from the other box with the lavender crackle beads. And um, I just, when, when I made my loops, I made them a little bit bigger for this one so it slid in a little bit easier. I didn't make quite a full round of the wire. So when I was cutting my memory wire, I just cut it about three quarters of the way around. Let me find an end here and I'll show you what I did. So I cut it, here's a full loop right here. I cut it about here. So that it, or actually about here. So that it was a little bit smaller and then it would make a loop like so. So when you cut them, cut them both the same size. So once you cut your first one, then measure and cut your second one and then you'll make sure you have the same amount. And then use your pliers to turn your loops in the same spot. So you may want to mark the pliers. And then I just turned it a little bit bigger, so I moved down about here on my pliers and turned bigger loops so that I could hook them together. Did it exactly the same way I did my other earrings. And then after I rolled my one down, I left this one straight, put it on my beads, and then I just wire wrapped, like I showed you with the other one, with the big red one, the little wire wrap loop. I wire wrapped it in exactly the same way, except for I dropped a silver bead on the head pin first, a lavender bead, two more silver beads, and then I wrapped around the wire, like so. So it made a little bit longer drop. Then I just hooked an ear wire into the loop on top. So it's the same exact process. I didn't see any point in um, doing it again. And then you have a really nice, pretty hoop earring. So anyway, that's what I decided to do with what came in my boxes. And hopefully you'll have fun with your boxes. If you want to share what you've done, you can always post it on my Facebook page. Thanks. Bye-bye.